stem cells. One of the most amazing things to talk about. It's been controversial. We're going to have a debate in class about this. Nowadays, maybe it's getting less controversial because of the different types of ways that we can look at stem cells. But here are some basics. So what are they really? Well, in the very beginning, when a sperm cell met an egg cell to create you, that was one, you were one cell in the beginning, okay? And then so that sperm cell and egg cell combined together, the genetic information combined to make the very first cell to start off who you would eventually become. And that was one cell with 46 chromosomes in there. And then that cell divided and turned into two cells. At that point, those two cells were just copies of each other. And it keeps doing that for a while. It's called mitosis. You might have seen that word for a while. Uh, but stem cells, in the beginning, you were just a blob of cells. We didn't have uh, hair or arms or a heart and a pancreas. All that stuff starts developing later. So eventually, those cells have to specialize and turn into specific types of cells. But in the beginning, these stem cells are different from the regular cells we see in our body now because uh, of two things. They are undifferentiated, which means they have not turned into anything specific. They have not specialized yet into a certain type of cell. So we call that undifferentiated. So a cell that has not yet become specialized is therefore called undifferentiated. Uh, stem cells are self-sustaining. We saw in the short documentary that's posted on Edmodo that a stem cell has a choice. It has a choice. It's either going to specialize and turn into another cell or it's going to divide and continue producing more stem cells because if you run out of stem cells, then you can't actually produce any more specialized cells. So some of those stem cells will divide and turn into new stem cells and other ones will become specific cells that are out there. So cell stem cells are self-sustaining and they divide for long periods of time and we have these stem cells well they were there in the very beginning they're called embryonic stem cells from when we were an embryo but we still have some stem cells in our bodies now okay and uh we're gonna be talking about that in a little bit so uh, really quickly embryonic stem cells umbilical cord cells are there as well too they are left in the umbilical cord and actually one of my buddies who had a kid this is a while back already i'm so behind anyways had a kid and it was offered to them the the doctors at the hospital they have a, a particular service where they can store the umbilical cord umbilical cord tissue for stem cells uh, up until the kid turns like i think it's 15 or 16. so with the possibility that in the future if something happened if there were some come some kind of disease that they found out about that perhaps the stem cells that were still there in the umbilical cord could be used uh, for some kind of treatment. I thought that was really interesting. It's very expensive though. I can't remember how much, but uh, I remember him and his wife turned it down, turned down that uh, option. Okay, the bone marrow also contains stem cells. The bone marrow contains uh, blood stem cells, which are stem cells that can differentiate and turn into many of the different types of blood cells, including various white blood cells and red blood cells, as you know. Rag. Stem cells can be used f to treat various types of diseases and we're finding out more and more stuff about this and uh, hopefully within our lifetime, within my lifetime, I'm 33, so within my lifetime I'm expecting some diseases within the next 20 years. Hopefully these technologies will developed, be developed enough that they can actually be start to be used for helping with heart disease, pancreatic disease various types of nervous system failures and things like that it would certainly be fantastic. So imagine the potential, the idea that I could take a stem cell that hasn't turned into anything yet, but I could trick it to turn into something. And I could trick it to just turn into like heart tissue or something like that. And now I can do several things with this heart tissue. I can... Uh, Maybe I can implant it on a heart to make a heart stronger. Maybe I could test other drugs on this tissue so I can actually see how my various uh, drugs produced in pharmaceutical companies actually affect heart tissue without having to risk trying it on a bunch of monkeys or a bunch of rats or even real humans and find out that it's actually a pretty fatal chemical. So uh, there's lots of good things that we can do. So stem cells could be potentially tricked in any kind of issue. 
experimentally, I know there's a lot more stuff out there now, but uh, insulation tissue of neurons, of neurons, neurons are surrounded by this insulation tissue here called the myelin sheath, this fatty tissue. Um, insulation tissue of neurons has been grown in rats to help increase their mobility. So some of them, you know, they deliberately, it's kind of sad, they deliberately damage their spinal cord or nervous system, then try to treat them to see if this can actually repair, which is a very difficult thing to do. Um, spinal cord tissue is not a type of tissue that grows back spontaneously. You don't get an automatic fix, like when you get a paper cut and your skin grows back. If you break your neck or damage your spinal cord, uh, that could leave you paralyzed for the, for the rest of your life. But this could change the outlook of some of that. Uh, experiments to study development and gene control. So basically looking at how cells can combine together, um, how cells the are interact with each other to turn into tissues, how we actually take a stem cell and trick it into turning into one of these other types of specialized tissue. So understanding how we can do that, that's gene regulation, because you understand that a cell actually has all the genes in there, but by turning certain ones of them on and off, you can end up with specialized cells that exist. Uh, cultured pluripotent stem cells, so you can turn these cells into uh, big groups of tissues for a particular therapy, kind of like we talked about with the heart tissue and the pancreatic tissue to help people with diabetes. Bone marrow, nerve cells, heart muscle cells, pancreatic cells, specifically the beta cells in the pancreas that produce insulin. And also what we talked about before, I mentioned this uh, drug development and toxicity tests. If you create heart tissue in the lab, uh, you can test your drugs like that. Okay, one final specific example is a specific use. We call this a therapeutic use of stem cells. Uh, we also call this therapeutic cloning because we're making cells, we're making copies of cells for the purpose of therapies. Therapeutic cloning, the on the other side of that would be reproductive cloning. So when you talk, when you hear the word clone, you have to be very specific. Are you talking about reproductive cloning? In other words, to make new sheep, make a copy of yourself, uh, things that are in sci-fi movies and have all kinds of ethical complications? Or are you talking about therapeutic cloning, which is cloning cells for the purpose of therapies, for treatments, for treatments of various uh, biological disorders. So really, really quickly, uh, the greatest success so far in the use of stem cells is in bone marrow transplants. So you're actually putting um, kind of new bone marrow stem cells, which produce blood cells, uh, into somebody's system for treatment of disease. So for example, uh, these are called HS cells hematopoietic stem cells, HS cells, which are in the bone marrow. They are actually a type of stem cell, which is kind of an adult stem cell. They can't turn into uh, nerve cells or pancreatic cells, but they can turn into many of the different types of blood cells you can see in this diagram over here. Literally, very few, very few cells can actually replace the entire blood system because uh, well, each of these stem cells can reproduce to form more stem cells and they can become specialized as well. Uh, in treating lymphoma, which is a type of cancer of the blood, um, basically you follow these steps. The person who's sick, you remove cells, their cells from their bone marrow because there's something wrong with them. They are dividing uncontrollably or they're causing other types of problems. So you literally remove all of them and you kill the rest of them using chemotherapy. Um, so you're not only killing the, the cancerous cells, but you're also killing all the healthy cells. So you need uh, a, new, a new source of healthy bone marrow cells, these HS cells. So healthy HS cells are transplanted back to the patient and it restores the healthy blood cells so you can regenerate the entire blood system. That's one type of treatment, but this is not specifically um, starting from embryonic stem cells or starting from adult stem cells and growing tissue and then treating with the entire tissue. Perhaps that can be done as well too using HS cells that are actually grown in vitro, which means in the lab um, to actually replace some of these things. Anyways, there might be some questions that come up, so go ahead and post any questions that you have and thank you very much.